Hello, today is Tuesday, the 16th of September, 2008, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Uh, the market finished with a gain today, up $1.74 or 1.4%. Uh, we saw that the market opened on a uh, gap lower and actually came right down to that 50% retracement level on the monthly time frame that I'd mentioned yesterday. I was saying it is approximately 117.25, and uh, yesterday it said that based on the way the market was declining yet on Monday, that we ought to hit that... Uh, by the end of the week, if not tomorrow, which was, uh, of course, today. And uh, here we clearly hit that with a low of 117. A lot of times we see that these levels act as support because a lot of people are watching those levels. We saw the 38.2% retracement level, and now the 50% retracement level. We had the market come down to that level on a bout of real panicky selling, and we saw a uh, huge volume reversal here. So this is the biggest volume we've seen all year. And similar to all these other fearful sell-offs, they're often punctuated with very large volume. As George Soros said, volume and volatility tend to peak at uh, turning points and diminish with the trends. Now, it doesn't mean we're completely out of the woods in here. Uh, obviously, there's still a lot of news type things that, that can influence uh, what this market's doing. A lot of people are hopeful that the AIG problem will work itself out. We'll see how that uh, occur unwinds uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. If it does, then it looks like we've got a little bit of reason for hope uh, that this market can hold on. You can see where the market rallied up to, um, that it came right up to uh, Friday, or um, not Fridays, but uh, the lows of the last couple of weeks. So we're near that 122 to 122 and a half level. We do remain below a declining five-day moving average. And of course, the Fed uh, made their uh, no no change to policy in here today. The market was, again, it gapped lower, but started rallying right from the get-go. We saw that shake out right here, which is very typical, that large volatility right around, you know, right after the Federal Reserve makes any changes or announcements to what their uh, bias is as far as monetary policy. And then we saw that those gains did hold. So that's somewhat encouraging. But again, we're still just back to these levels. The market remains badly damaged, but from here, we're seeing a few uh, good technical signs, notably, again, the large uh, reversal uh, candle that we saw today and that very large volume. So uh, expect that there's going to be a lot more volatility in this market, but uh, maybe getting back up above 123.5, 124, recapturing that five-day moving average, seeing that five-day moving average and then moving higher. We're still going to be met, though, uh, likely with a lot of resistance at these prior levels uh, as the market does rally. So it's not going to be, I wouldn't think, a just straight up, but from failed moves often come fast moves. We have to be aware of any opportunity. It remains hugely volatile. And if you can make it a living trading in this environment and remember the lessons from a bear market, the next time a bull, we have a bull market, you're going to be a much better trader. So there's the silver lining in all this if you're if you're just you know scraping by or, or managing to, to uh, get through. It. The Russell 2000, big reversal, big volume in here as well. We're still below that 50-day moving average. But we've got a lot of conflicting signals, declining 10, 20, 200-day uh, moving average, advancing 50-day moving average, just massive volatility, which means that when we have, you know, you know, technical analysis isn't a perfect science, just like fundamental analysis isn't. I've seen some people saying, you know, fundamental technicals are no good. Well, how good have the fundamentals been in here if you're buying low PEs or cash flow or whatever? It, fundamental information is only as good as the information you're given you given to you and as we've seen we're not always given the exact truth price is the only truth in the market and it's the only thing that pays us and that's where you need to uh, spend your your time analyzing we're back above the $70 level that uh, that broke uh, yesterday on this closing basis we saw a little bit further shakeout in here and then that level recaptured we're back up to the declining uh, five-day moving average and in here uh, just a uh, you know about that 72 30 72 40 level is our next potential larger level of uh, uh, resistance in the near term but again we're seeing somewhat encouraging signs but it it, it it doesn't, you know, we, what we, we need to really see this pattern broken here, uh, this pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And this level is at about $72 a share. If we take a look at uh, the SPY, here's this similar 
pattern of lower highs and lower lows. So we're still clearly in a downtrend, and you have to look at these rallies as guilty till proven innocent. It doesn't mean there aren't some fantastic intraday trading opportunities, but I think it remains a, 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 a more of a day trader's environment as it has been uh, for basically all year. The financials, of course, yesterday they broke through that and some important support level at $19.75. It looked like maybe they were going to head back down towards here. This is why you've got to suspend what you believe and trade what you observe because we saw a large uh, gap lower in here as well. Big volume reversal and right back up in that level. So now this looks like the potential for a bear trap. It doesn't mean that you can call a bottom in here. As you know, if you've uh, watched any media, the bottom has been called in all these stocks over and over and over again and very few people have gotten them right. Uh, think about all the people that call the bottom in Lehman Brothers. I'll call the bottom today and I think it's uh, uh, pretty good, pretty solid down there at uh, 30 cents. Um, but anyways, back to the financials. The financials, uh, you know, remain very volatile in here. The 1975 level, we want to see that level now act as support and, uh, you know, ho hopefully hold above the this uh, level here at about 1875 because that's where we have a high or low right now. The semiconductors, where are they? Semiconductors were up uh, 28 cents or 1.1%. Also, uh, the recipient of huge volume in here. The big level for this market is up towards that $27 area. Maybe we get a move up towards there. If we look at the 30 uh, minute time frame, we've still got a declining five day moving average. If the market can recover, maybe rally up towards that 26, pull back towards the right to, to what would probably then be a rising five day moving average and then find support, well then maybe it can push higher for a move up towards that $27 level. But that's a lot of maybes and a lot of ifs. Focus on what's happening as you trade. Uh, but clearly 26 is going to be an important level that if it can get above there, perhaps we get a little bit of a, uh, a further uh, continuation at the uh, uh, as shorts get squeezed. The NASDAQ 100, the, the QQQQ was uh, up 33 cents or 0.78%. Uh, I had re-shown uh, you this uh, symmetrical triangle yesterday and said that basically the height of this equals down to about the $37 level and that uh, maybe it wasn't 37, I don't know, but uh, it was um, a bit, yeah, I guess basically about 37. And 37 is also the uh, Fibonacci retracement. Where'd my uh, pen go? Let me see. Uh, well, let's get that to Fibonacci. If we get that to right here, we can see the 38.2% retracement level was hit again today. Um, and this is the 50% retracement. So the NASDAQ has held up much better, obviously, than the SPY, as the SPY on the monthly time frame has hit that 50% retracement. Um, back to the NASDAQ, though, uh, you know, don't look for 37 to occur right away. Don't get locked into that belief. We've seen a large flood out yesterday and recovery today. Not as big volume, but uh, again, I, I, I guess uh, AIG traded over a billion shares on its own. Uh, when we look at the NASDAQ 100 in here, well, let's take a look at the one minute time frame first. You can see it struggled with that daily VWAP. Same thing when the Fed uh, made, made their announcement here today. Uh, we had that volatility. Then the market was able to push higher, but it gave back part of those as well. So it's clearly, and, and where it gave back those gains was right up here as it rallied right up to that five-day moving average, and that's what I posted on the, on the uh, uh, blog intraday. Constructively, though, we saw that this level in here, these prior little levels of uh, uh, support that acted as resistance uh, in the morning did hold. So I think this level down to about $42.10, it'll be important for that to hold. And then perhaps we can start to uh, uh, move a little bit higher up towards the upper end of this range near 43 and a quarter or so. I'm not bullish. I, you know, you look at this market is clearly broken. I think there's good opportunities on the upside and we've gotten pretty oversold. Maybe we can get some good news out of this AIG and that helps squeeze the shorts. We have to just take a day by day in here because the situation remains very volatile and risk management is key.